and welcome to another evening of Frank Conversation here on Hard Copy, coming to you from our studios in Abuja. I'm Maupe Ogun Yusuf. On Hard Copy tonight, we speak with a special advisor to the president on ease of doing business, asking what new tricks she's got up her sleeves to ensure that businesses in Nigeria not only survive uh, the current harsh economic situation, but also thrive. Dr. Jumoke Oduole is no stranger on this turf, having served the last president in this capacity and also heading the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, PEBEC. Dr. Oduole, welcome to Hard Copy. Thank you for having me. Well, it's been, uh, shall I say, first Happy Women's Month. And then we were told only recently uh, that businesses, particularly banks, now have more female CEOs. Interestingly, this, it's like the more we see improvements, and that's what people who know about these things have said, that the more we see improvement, it will seem the more we also expect that so much more will be done at the bottom. They are wondering if this also translates you know, to improvement in the lives of girls and young ladies. Um, do you see that correlation happening or are we still, you know, struggling with that? I believe it does. There's a lot of work to be done, but a lot of female leaders spend time mentoring, spend time grooming. You have junior achievers, you have Wimbies. So those conversations on bringing on the girl child, a lot of women take their own daughters and their daughter's friends into their lives and what they're doing. And so when you look at the most underprivileged, there's also quite a bit of attention given to them from women, from female leaders. I think that empathy, that compassion translates. And women also don't forget the boy child because we have both men and women as, you know, we have both boys and girls. So I have a girl and I have a boy, so. Women, do you see women-led businesses struggling more than those owned by men? Um. I would say that they're different factors. So women-led businesses have more of a challenge, say, with access to capital, with raising funds from investors, um, hard issues like that. Uh, when you have co-led businesses, co-founded businesses, a woman and a man, mm -hmm. they do really well because they bring both skills to the table. But women-led businesses have a lot of agility, have a lot of resilience innovation they're able to adapt and move and spot opportunities i find quite interestingly so to whom much is given they've, they've had to prove themselves a lot more so they come a lot more competent and prepared in my opinion and thorough at what they do when also tend to have imposter syndrome so they over prepare they over achieve and so that makes them very rugged the last time you were here, um, we had taken a look at a report which uh, Pebec had published, uh, or will I say released now, really? looking at how yeah. ministries, departments and agencies were functioning in providing transparency and efficiency in their daily activities. Now, some agencies seem to be doing pretty okay. Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board, Standards Organization of Nigeria, and uh, even agencies like the Nigerian Quarantine Services uh, seem to be doing pretty okay. Now, others were not doing too badly or could very well improve. Securities and Exchange Commission, Central Bank of Nigeria, Nigerian Ports Authority. But there were so, much, so many more, so many more, a really, really long list and yeah. a very significant one, uh, which were not doing well at all. In fact, some of them don't look like they had made any efforts. <laughs> and they include... An office as powerful as that of, of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, the Nigerian Police, Customs Service, um, and even Servicom. You know. So I'm just wondering, because last year, I, I know that when we're speaking with you, it, it was just the half-year report that had mm -hmm. been published. Eventually, mm -hmm. you sent the full report. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason you gave, which you, you said, well, perhaps part of what we could have been saying is the election yeah, this is a new year, and I know that well. I don't know how quickly you'll be publishing another report, but from what you're seeing so far, have there been any changes since the last report was published? Okay, well, thanks for asking me that question. So the half-year report, the full-year report, will actually be released at the end of this quarter. We've been collating, but part of what we do is not just collate the reports that the MDAs submit. We also go on inspection. We also have mystery shopping and we talk with private sector. I must say that it may be a bit of a, a bloodbath. It may continue in that light because we visited the seaports and the airports a couple of weeks ago 
and the timelines and the the reforms, the transparency, the touting, the extortion, um, those pain points are still very much well alive and active. So the methodology will certainly be tightening up around that because it's one thing to tick some boxes. Um, we do triangulate. We call the customers and ask, are these services really as the agencies presented? But what we have seen ourselves is a bit disheartening. So we've been engaging with the, the ministries, departments, and agencies. You recall that on the 20th of February, at the last PEBEC meeting, we launched our 90-day regulatory reform accelerator. And what that does is ending on the 20th of May, 90 days. So in 30 days, we'll be coming to the public, and every 30 day at 60 days, and then at 90 days, we'll have the final report. So I will probably be back and releasing, sending you the 90 day, the 30 day sort of checkpoint. Is some of the administrations, uh, you know, getting to get back into the rigor of transparency, efficiency. It's been a bit, a bit slow on the uptick. Uh, we've been meeting with agencies every two weeks and making sure that the reform cycle is kicking back in. You know, every time there's a transition, that discipline takes some time to kick back in. So that's what the PEBEC team is working on. It's interesting you say every time there's a transition because the last time there was a transition, it was seemed that the discipline kicked in automatically. People were not certain what, it, what was lying ahead and from what we understand and mm -hmm. even from what we felt, it would seem that, you know, agencies and uh, ministries were on the straight and narrow by themselves because of the uncertainty. Uh, why do you think that that is not happening at this time? Well, I think there are a number of things. So it happens sometimes that agencies have their own idea of their turf. Um, there are always a lot of turf wars between ministries, departments, agencies. For instance, we continue to try to reduce the number of agencies operating at the seaports and to keep it to a barest minimum. We have the approvals for it. This has started since 2012 in uh, President Goodluck Jonathan's administration. But you find agencies still trying to get to the seaports. So agencies um, like Sun, uh, that for good reasons, and we've explained why you don't need to be at the seaports, you have your, your office uh, right there in Apapa. You're supposed to come and join inspectors. Still keep agitating to be at the seaport. So you have Sun, you have NAFDAQ, you have, got, you, know, you know, Nigeria would have uh, almost an infinite number of agencies at the seaports. And then we compare to other seaports in the region. And then we compare to global best practices. So we need automation. We need to really use technology and the agencies are aware of this and they're aware that they can do their work without being physically there and that there's a, there's a, so so the, age, the the dance keeps going back and forth i've been called to national assembly before why aren't certain agencies allowed to be at the seaport substandard goods this that the other and then i say perhaps we need to look at the duties and functions and even the legislations of these agencies to make sure that we're working in a way that makes the business environment conducive. Because at the end of the day, we at the public Secretariat, we're the voice for small and medium-sized enterprises and all the businesses that, you know, it's a trading nation. Mm -hmm. So when you have costs uh, and time and lack of transparency going up, that is what we're created to do. The transformation office is supposed to make sure that the human interface is less. So there's less rent-seeking opportunities. There's less extortion. Mm -hmm. There's more discipline. You use innovation and transparency by layering technology automation in the processes. So trying to uh, get agencies, and I don't want to pick on any particular agency, mm -hmm. to really work with us to layer automation on their processes so that Businesses from their offices can make the payments, can make the applications. It's faster, it's cheaper, it's quicker, it's more transparent. Corruption goes down. That's the battle that mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. as the PEB Secretariat. That's a very big battle. And I, one would have thought, I, I actually wrote that down now to say, you know, why do you think government agencies seem so averse to automation? I mean, it should be a no-brainer. You would think that, you know, you want to get your work done easy. And if, you know, a computer can do it, if internet service can do it, why not leverage on it? But before I ask you that question, because mm -hmm. that question is still yeah. coming, I'm just wondering, because last time, you know, the idea behind publishing the, the report which you uh, publish on efficiency, and transparency is also to ensure that you know agencies that are not doing so well will feel embarrassed enough 
to want to do something about it. Do you think that those consequences are steep enough for them uh, to act as an incentive for them to want to do better? Well, it's certainly coming. We have a lot of new um, agency heads. I know, for instance, the MD of FAN was not happy at all uh, with, the, with the rankings of, of the FAN team and has been working really hard on implementing a lot of reforms. So you have you know, fresh thinking in the system. You have some agency heads that are embracing automation, uh, some ministers as well. You see the Honorable Minister of Interior really pushing a lot of reforms in that area, uh, in, the, in the passports and in, in, you know. So you have a, a, a mixed bag. Sometimes people feel that the automation or the trans, or the sort of can, can have, can disrupt how they do their things. You know, as human beings, change is not always the, the easiest thing. Yeah. So we do a lot of engagement. We do a lot of um, collaborative discussions. We audit processes. But apparently that yeah. is not enough. Well, you know, I've always said it, the consequence management is where the buck stops. So the office of the head of service, the office of the secretary to, to the government. Who are um, also in the red. <laughs> well, you know, it is what it is. Some of the agencies, I would say, it's for lack of, it's for lack of submission. And so we've been going around, my team has really been going around. Uh, we were at police affairs just the other day, really good discussion with the Honorable Minister, with the Permanent Secretary, and we pointed out to them that police affairs has not been submitting monthly, so of course they're going to uh, score low. Mm -hmm. So I want you to hold hold fire a bit. Let the full year report come out at mm -hmm. the end of this month. But you've given us yeah. a hint. You said it's, I a, have. it's a bloodbath. <laughs> well, in mm -hmm. terms of what we see practically, mm -hmm. and what we don't want is a report that loses credibility because agencies are trying to tick boxes. So we're very, very, very um, focused on the transparency. We're not going to lie to Nigerians. Before we know where we're going, we have to know where the rain started beating us. So we have to really know where the pain points are. Ours is to raise this up to the government to say these are the, and, and you know, the 90-day the accelerator, the reforms that need to be implemented, it's arranged by ministry. Um, so there are about eight priority areas. There are about 16 reforms and uh, areas that need to be, 16 ministries under that, and everybody knows. So all the PEBEC members, all the ministers that have uh, their agencies that have deliverables, they, they all know. And you know that the CDCU is also tracking. So I believe what gets measured gets done. Mm -hmm. And Mr. President has been really committed to uh, watching delivery and implementation. So all of us, have to deliver on what I have to deliver on what I'm 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 uh, appointed to deliver on, and everybody else as well. Yeah. So how is that helping you? The fact that you know, <laughs> I, I, we didn't hear that aides have their own deliverables. I mean, the people whom the, there's a lot of focus on are the ministers. Is that helping you in any way? Um, I would say that it depends on why you're here. Like, I'm not exactly wasting my time being in government. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to make an impact. As you rightly pointed out at the beginning of the interview, this would be like the eighth year I've been here. And this ease of doing business intervention from inception in 2016 till date, from ideation to implementation. So we've had our highs. We've had our World Bank rankings move up 39 places. We've also had big frustrations. And we're very public about it. We've had reforms that we've tried to implement that we just did not get any headway yeah, in, would, in. Yeah, so the question I'm asking is whether the, the fact that the ministers are going to be held accountable, you know, through the KPIs that they have, is that making your work any easier? Because you would think that they would be looking for ways to ensure that, you know, their own agencies and the ministries and departments they have under, the, under them are efficient, they're transparent. I, be, I believe so, but, you know, consequence management, it would depend on how their boss um, handles them at the end of this quarter. So we'll know soon enough. I think we'll all know soon enough. But I think that they're taking it seriously. The CDC is taking it very seriously. We at the PEBEC Secretariat, we're working with ministries, departments, and agencies very seriously. It's a tough time, as you said at the beginning of the interview. Nigerians, and we're all Nigerians, we're all shopping from the same markets. It's not a picnic, food inflation, everything going on. So the pressure, you saw some of the circulars that came out recently about traveling and different things. The pressure, uh, central bank under a lot of pressure trying to fix things. Um, everybody knows that Mr. President is serious about them delivering on their mandate or they're going to be out. That's exactly what he told them. 
and I don't think any minister is going to let the agencies or the public and civil servants under them allow them to sort of lose their jobs. So that kind of cascades, and that's the pressure and consequence management that's needed. So I think that once the scores are out, um, by April, I'm sure there should be some delivery unit deliverables, and I know it's going to be public. We always make our reports public. Um, what gets measured gets done if there's consequence management. Well, you've talked about how you've been on this now for a few, for a decent number of years, eight years ongoing, and I know that your headaches have been very big. <laughs> I, I do not know what it will be like, you know, to keep saying year in, year out. <clears throat> Excuse me. Some agencies seem to be doing okay. They they are embracing it. Yes, even though you say you still have to, you know, confirm. But some agencies don't even. It doesn't look. I mean, how can an agency get zero point zero zero percent in 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 transparency and efficiency? Not even as it doesn't appear that anything is being done. So, in your own estimation, why do you think that this is? It's a real big task or big ask. Um, on the part on your part and those who are seeking reforms to get government agencies to embrace these reforms and automation as well when they realize the connection between what they do or not do on the economy not just on msmes we have our new uh, business champions which is the largest like over a billion dollar revenue 23 of them trying to give them specific uh, curated um, services and all the other cascading it down was because of the ecosystem. When public and civil servants and uh, appointed officials understand the effect that what we do or fail to do has on the economy directly and the consequences because Mr. President has said he's serious about this, he wants investment, he wants the economy fixed, he's giving marching orders. Uh, all governors, I told you I, I spoke at, at the NEC uh, yesterday, all governors are aware of this agenda, are committed to it. We have the SABRE program with the World Bank. So it's, it's one economy. There's no way to slice it. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows what is at stake. So I think that with Nigerians having made their voices clear and with the government knowing exactly what is at stake, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Mm -hmm. And to commend the agencies, the ministers, and the public and civil servants who continue to try to reform and work is not always easy because their work is also intertwined. So if you're if we're working on port reforms or airports reforms, we like I, I told you I was with Police Affairs um, a couple of days ago. Their work would interface with about six or seven or eight other agencies. So when people are moving in different directions, what happens is that you end up staying still because someone's moving backwards, someone's moving forward, someone's staying still. So it's it's tough. Um, but the leadership of the government has made it clear that this is the direction we're going. So now it's the consequence management that will make the difference. That's the only thing that I'm waiting and hoping for that will make the difference. If not, frankly, Malpre, I'm, I'm actually wasting my time. Well, I sincerely hope that you won't be wasting your time. <laughs> Same I, here. I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, the state, because you've mentioned the fact that there was, of course, a national executive economic council meeting yes. yesterday and usually populated by the governors and and i know that you also a part of your mandate is also to work with the state to work with yes. some nationals um is there any progress that we can report in some of the states i know that you usually you know rank the states as well last we yes. checked it was gumbi state that yes. was leading um yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. with the change that we've seen in the number of uh, chief executives of states um uh, should we be expecting any surprises um i think you should be expecting mm -hmm. some surprises mm -hmm. so the report on subnationalities of doing business comes out every two years mm -hmm. and it will be coming out in march of 2025 Okay, that's now a long the time cycle, now. well, the cycle begins in April. Okay. So that was how come I was presenting yesterday. The cycle begins in April. So state governments are now collating all the reforms they would have done in the last two years. So by Q4, they'll be uh, submitting those and we'll be having the verification. There'll also be an independent consultant going around the country, scooping uh, data, talking with uh, private enterprises on how each business environment is doing for each state. And that's done independently. Then there's a separate firm that does the analysis and coalition to ensure transparency and efficiency. Um, just to say that in, in terms of keeping the Chinese walls, it's quite expensive, 
but it's better done this way so that the people collating the data are different from the team analyzing the data so that when the scores come out, private sector and the government can be sure that it was done transparently. The World Bank had to discontinue their own report because it fell into some disrepute. And so we go the extra mile as government of Nigeria to make sure that the report that we publish every two years, this will be the third iteration, is transparent and it's accurate. We revised the methodology in 2023. And um, so far, so good. It's not just the rankings. And I think one of the uh, governors made the point yesterday. It's not just looking at the rankings. It's also looking at the scores. How are states moving in the right direction mm -hmm. as an economy as a whole? The idea yeah. is it to attract businesses to those states oh. or to tell investors, you know, where you will find it easier to do business? Both. Okay. Both. So, in, in fact, that discussion came up because you have um, complexity finds it more difficult, and this is global. So the governor of Lagos uh, mentioned this also, that you know how no matter what they do, the complexity and the volume, uh, speaking in terms of Gombe and smaller economies, is the same way globally. New Zealand, Singapore will always beat Germany or the US. Um, Mauritius, Cape Verde will always beat you know, South Africa, Nigeria. But once an economy has passed a certain threshold in terms of doing business and the, the, the businesses uh, operating in that economy can vouch that it's not so difficult to pay my tax, it's not so difficult to get land, it's not so difficult to get access to justice, basic things like that, the PPP framework, fiber optics, we have access to, to um, internet, connectivity. These are the bread and butter that make a business environment friendly, easy, agile. And that then lends itself to complexity. By the time you have the complementary infrastructure, power, rail, um, seaports, airports, then the, the economy can now start um, going into deeper complexity of productivity and competitiveness and punching where it should be. That's the Nigerian economy now, where it should be in global terms and regional terms. Well, I'm just wondering, because you have also said that you are the voice for medium and small businesses, and maybe sometimes occasionally the big businesses now, too. Now we're, <laughs> we're, now we're for everybody. Like uh, now we're giving attention to our payback reform champions because they need the help. And then by osmosis, they, they bring up. So for those of them who are watching you tonight, you know, and are wondering, oh, oh I need Pepec's business, I mean, biz help in, in this area, in this area. How can I get across? I mean, what can Pepec really do for me? For those who have never been in formal government circles, who have just been running their businesses mm -hmm. on the side, on their own, doing their thing, and maybe occasionally, it's only when the taxman comes around mm -hmm. that they feel the presence of government. Watching you tonight, what can they request of Pebec? Okay, so I'll be clear on what we don't do. We mm -hmm. don't do interventions, we don't give out money, we don't, you know. So what we do do is we work on your regulatory and bureaucratic and legislative challenges. So for instance, we have a call out on legislations. We're having our Omnibus Bill 2.0. So if there's a law that's particularly irritating, that's affecting your sector or your business, please send us the law, why it's irritating you, and what you would prefer to see. Preferably, if you know what happens in other climes, please tell us as well. So we need to crowdsource knowledge and fix this economy and, and review together. The same thing with other regulatory areas, um, bureaucratic. If you know about a hotspot, there's a particular office that just does not get anything done. Please let us know. Because it's very difficult for uh, public officials in Abuja to know what's going on all around the country. So if there's some office in uh, Contagora somewhere that just does not, um, and, there, and we have a lot of, uh, like NAFDAQ, we have CAC, we have a lot of offices with regional offices, um, regional presence across the country. We need to know. So when we get that information, we then go after fixing things within government by highlighting the hotspots and making sure that they get fixed. It's not a magic wand, it's not easy, but giving that information to the head of service, giving that information to Mr. President, to the honorable ministers, and expecting that the right thing would be done, the actions would be taken, the consequence management positively and otherwise would happen, is what we can do for the public. <laughs> well. As we wrap up now, I'm just going to ask you one more thing. I mean, okay. you have been an academic. 
<laughs> and now you're in the uh, in the non-academic space. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing things. Uh, you're focusing from coming from theory to, as I said, a lot of practical. Um, what exactly has been the greatest? Will I say challenge or will I say um, adventure for you? Oof. I think that when you have an idea, because academics, we work with ideas, we work with knowledge, when you can translate it into something practical, and then you see the effect, you see a reform delivering. So for instance, with Corporate Affairs Commission, when you can change a law, because you think about it, I'm a lawyer, and then you see the effect on businesses, and then people stop you or write you messages and say, you know, that reform you guys did, it changed my business, or it made it so easy. That is the most gratifying thing, the impact. That's what makes it all worth it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I have to thank you so much. We wish you, well, we sincerely hope that you will not be wasting your time and that there will be, <laughs> yeah. you know, so serious consequence management for all the work that you are doing. Dr. Jumoke Oduwali, thank you so much for coming on Hard Copy. Thank you. It's always a pleasure, Mark. Well, that's the program tonight. Uh, we'll always want to hear from you. So please make use of the handles showing on your screen to speak to us. Thank you for watching. I'm Mao Kwe Yusuf. Good night.